a minute past half past six, if that's okay with everyone. Okay, thank you very much and welcome to everyone. Um, just a, a couple of things, obviously, um, before we go on to the agenda. Um, just I'll introduce myself first. I'm Mike McBride, the chair for tonight, um, and also I'll just register my couple of interests. I'm also Secretary of Kernel Community Council and Chair of the Good Hall Faskin and Palace Creek Conservation Group, uh, which is around the sort of Airdrie, Florida Bank, Chapel Hall, Cairnhill area. Um, just a couple of domestics. Again, just another welcome to anyone who's newly joined us for the first time. And also, um, if anyone's on live streaming under YouTube who also is watching it, uh, welcome to tonight's meeting. Um, I know most people have put their names on the sidebar, but if you haven't done it yet, if you could just add it in quickly, it'd be great, thank you. Um, and just a little domestic, I know people are very well uh, aware of Zoom, etc. and this current call. If you can put yourself on mute, if you're not speaking, it just uh, saves background noise and lets us hear other speakers. Um, and if you want to make a, a comment, um, you can also put that into the chat bar. Um, if you can try and make it as brief as possible, that would be fantastic. Um, so thank you very much and welcome again. Um, just moving on to the agenda. Um, do we have any apologies for tonight? Yes, Chair, we, we have a number. Um, Councillor Cullen, Councillor Stocks, Brian Kane from Fire and Rescue, Lynn Adams from NHS Lanarkshire, um, although Anne Alexander is here tonight for, for NHS. Abby and Ava, who are our youth reps, are, mm. aren't able to come along tonight either. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Ian McNeil, Michael. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just moving on to the next agenda, minutes of the previous meeting and any matters arising from anyone? I would assume everyone's had a copy of the minutes from the last time. Yep, okay. So I guess there's no matters arising. No, okay. Thank you. Um, just on the next point, it's the chair of the community board arrangements. Is that something specific um, to tonight or going forward? Christine? Hi, hi, chair. Um, really, that was uh, I think at the beginning, the first meeting we had a couple of people put themselves forward for chair. Yeah. Um, and it was just to see if the other person was still interested in doing that to to get in contact with us, and and we okay. can we can discuss that further with them. Thank okay. you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Um, just moving on to the next agenda, the general community board business and updates. Um, the driving digital locally, and that's, um, I forgot your name, sorry. Linda Johnson. Linda Johnson, if Linda wants to come in. Thanks, sorry, Linda. That's all right, Michael. Um, because earlier on, Lynn, you were hit for this one tonight, <laughs> but Christine had realised that it was actually myself, so. Thank you. So Matt's going to try and share the presentation. We had a bit of a technical hiccup last night at the Wishaw Board, but hopefully everything will go well tonight at Airdrie. So while uh, Matt's loading the presentation, I'll just say I'm Linda Johnson. Uh, I work within the digital programme of the Council and I've been invited along tonight to talk to you about the digital agenda for the Council to talk about your training and access needs and how we will work with you to address these I would just ask you if you want to drop any questions into the chat bar as I go along, uh, I'll be happy to pick these up at the end. So if we just move on, Matt, thank you. So as you're aware, the North Lanarkshire Partnership Community Planning Partnership Arrangements has established the nine community boards of which you are one of them. And we are looking to engage across North Lanarkshire um, as part of the framework for working with communities and in particular with the digital programme. We felt that the boards provided a structure for local decision making, investment and accountability. And again, the board provides a platform to begin our discussion around digital developments and inclusion in the Airdrie area. So tonight I'm going to talk a bit about the Council's digital ambitions, how we're going to roll these out at a local level. I'm also going to ask for your help at the end, both in terms of promoting the benefits of the digitisation agenda and asking you to get involved. 
barriers to digital inclusion and how we can ensure that no one is left out or excluded as part of this programme. So let's have a look at the Council's journey so far. So the plan for North Lanarkshire is the strategic vision for the Council and its partner organisations. And we want to make North Lanarkshire the place to live, learn, work, invest and visit. And we have individual programmes of work which are highlighted on the left hand side of the screen that are particular delivery arms for the digital programme. But we also have a number of um, programmes of work on the right hand side of your screen that are also enablers for driving the digital programme and for delivering services differently. So that just gives you the context overview of what we're going to talk about. North Lanarkshire Council has ambitions to be a leading digital authority. And in terms of the themes, you'll see the themes uh, are highlighted on this slide. In terms of the economy, we want to attract inward investment and expansion through improved connectivity and faster broadband. We want to ensure that digital technology is in place to support people to live independently and for longer in their own homes. And some of you will be familiar with some of the technical aspects that we've been in, involved in for a wee while now, particularly around the test flat that we have in North Lanarkshire, which continues to provide us with a test bed for emerging technologies. We want to make it easier for you to contact the council online and at a time that suits you. And we want our work workforce to be digitally skilled. And we want to use automation to free up our resources which will avoid duplication and allow us to prioritise those areas uh, to provide more efficient and effective services. And lastly, we want to make smarter use of the data that will allow us to monitor the trends. So how are we going to do this locally with you? So as I say, we want to work with you to identify and meet your digital needs. We want to build digital, digitally capable and confident communities and to ensure that you can take advantage of new job opportunities in the technology sector, but also to ensure that our children and young people are equipped and able to participate fully in digital learning, none more so important than the, the current pandemic situation that we find ourselves in. But we know that's not going to be easy. The stakeholder engagement around the local outcome improvement plan that you took part in uh, before Christmas has shown us that all nine community board areas identified digital inclusion as a priority. Do you want to move the slide on, Matt, if you can? Thank you. So six areas identified affordability as a key concern and the need to ensure that people have broad digital skills was raised in six areas and a further three highlighted the importance of this for older people in particular. And whilst we recognise that opportunities such as Teams, Zoom, Webex, whatever it might be, are great for involving our wider audiences, we do recognise that there's a risk that people who are not digitally connected may be left out. So where are we now? So the next slide highlights some of the work to date. So as we know, community boards are held remotely and the chair tonight talked about the live streaming um, and it's important that, that we have that wide reach for our stakeholder engagement. So you'll see that the last round of community boards attracted over 300 attendees, but there were over 1100 live streams or recordings that have been viewed through YouTube. So that's a huge audience for us. We also know that through the Scottish Government's Connecting Scotland programme, and our education colleagues were distributing devices and connectivity solutions to ensure that families who live on low income and vulnerable people um, can engage through the digital programme. And you'll see the figures there at um, point three on that slide. We've actually got updated figures for this evening. There's almost four and a half thousand devices have now been issued as part of that programme through our education and families colleagues and also over 700, 1700, sorry, connectivity issues have been resolved. So um, what we are also looking to do is to improve connectivity through free Wi-Fi and other affordable issues. And we work with colleagues across community learning and development and our culture NL and um, North Lancashire leisure programmes to be able to do that. But how can you help um, from, from the Airdrie um, community board? So we're asking you to get on board to work with us to help ensure that our communities are digitally included they're confident, capable and connected. So we want to encourage your groups to become involved 
and also to support individuals if they're feeling excluded or they don't understand or are lacking in digital confidence. And we want you to signpost them to digital champions, community learning and developments, or hopefully once the current restrictions are lifted into our libraries where um, support has, has always been available to them. Another example would be to encourage and help family members to sign up for my account. So my account will allow you to request council services online. And the, the system went live in November last year when we stood up what is called our customer services hub. Um, and, and the whole point of that is, as I said earlier, to allow you to access council services when it's suitable for you to do so. We have primarily focused on waste services to begin with and also added the COVID business grants, but more services will come online later this year and we'll feed that back through the community boards with Matt um, and the team. And finally, from tonight's meeting, I'm asking you to think about whether you would have time to join us with our digital subgroup and to work with us to shape the digital agenda to ensure it meets the needs and aspirations of your friends, families and your community. And I would ask that if you're interested in getting involved, that you can either pass on your name to me directly tonight, or you can speak to Matt, or you can drop us a wee message at the digital nl at northland.gov.uk mailbox, which is highlighted on your screen on the right hand side there. So I'd just like to thank you for listening um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Linda, for that presentation. Um, is there any questions? Uh, I, don't, I can't see the full screen yet. That's me. Is um, any attendees want to ask any questions to Linda? If you can raise your hand. For some people, I can't see on the screen. I can only see their name. So if, I can't see your screen if you want to put it in the sidebar if you maybe want to ask. I don't see anyone for you on that. No. No, I don't see anyone asking any questions, Linda. There's a question just come in the chat bar there, oh. Chair. Oh, yes, there is. Sorry. Um, it's basically saying is there, a, there is great focus on young people, but what is being done for older people in North Archer, Linda? Mm -hmm. Our um, community learning and development colleagues, but also through um, the outreach services, through our voluntary sector and so on, there are a number of programmes that we have. But again, that's one of the things that I'm asking you this evening to get involved so that we can make sure that we don't exclude anyone. Um, and also we've got some programmes through our adult health and social care. Um, and if anybody's interested, I can provide more details on those, Michael. Okay. Thank you. Um, can I ask um, a couple of things, Linda, if you don't mind? Of course. Um, regarding the, the digital, um, I know it came up a few times um, on our KNL Community Facebook um, when I was sharing about the town hubs um, and the consultations. And a couple of things that came up was about um, IT and Wi Fi, etc., which is um, they're asking if it can be a, a, a one of the priorities um, for people using Wi-Fi around any potential new hub proposals. Um, so that was one of them that came through. And I can assure you that it is um, on the agenda. I sit on the, the board for the town hubs, Michael, mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the, the ongoing conversations about what that needs to look like. Okay, thank you. If there's no more questions for Linda, um, I'm going to move on to the next point on the agenda. Um, and that's any, is there any terms of reference, Kristen, that's coming on late? Okay, um, thanks Chair. I just wanted to give you a wee quick update on where we're at with the terms of reference. Um, for, for people who are new to the, the, the board tonight, we have circulated a, a draft terms of reference. Now the terms of reference um, was broadly approved by the Council's Policy and Strategy Committee. Um, and what we did was we sent it out to, to local um, reps on the board to 
to ask them to give us some feedback. So we've received feedback, so I wanted to thank people who have, have taken the time to send the feedback through to us. Um, some of the points that were raised included things like voting rights. Um, and the voting rights, just to kind of explain, is that um, they reflect the elected member representation on the board, so the councillor's representation. It's preferable that the decisions will be made through consensus um, and based on clear evidence and community engagement processes. Um, voting would be very much a last resort within the board and only if um, we couldn't reach a, um, a consensus um, with, within the board. Other things that were raised were about language and terminology that was used within the terms of reference. Um, what we intend to do is to um, make sure that any abbreviations that are contained within it will be explained fully. We will also um, add a glossary of terms at the end to make it a bit easier for people to understand some of the language that's been used, but also um, to give a wee bit further information on, on some of the text that, that's contained within that. What I intend to do is once I've completed that, I will recirculate that to, to board members. Um, and obviously, um, once we've done that, if people are happy with that, then we'll look to, to have that terms of reference adopted um, for the board. So that's all I wanted to say, Chair. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that from anyone? Or anyone want to put a note in the comment bar? Uh, Bushra, you take yourself off mute, mute Bushra. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, the of reference is vital if we don't have we wouldn't know you know um, what we are supposed to be doing tell you the truth i was thinking that a lot not knowing because i thought maybe that's been covered before because i didn't attend the previous meeting so that will be very very helpful if you could produce the term of reference and it will be very clear to all of us Thank you, Bisha. Any further questions from anyone? Mm. No. Okay, next one is to the board development sessions, Matt Costello. Thanks, Chair. Um, just to briefly pick up on the last point about the terms of reference, just in addition to the terms of reference, we've also sent out a note which is about the role of the board members, um, which is hopefully gives some the people some background as to um, the, the, the role of board members and their, their involvement in the board itself, what things that they can raise and um, some issues that might expect to experience within the board. So if somebody wants to see that also, then please let us know and we'll arrange for that to be sent out. Um, as we also want to encourage people to have as much information as possible about the boards. Further in relation to that, for you know, here at the boards, um, previous boards and the, the current one, you'll hear about a number of different issues being uh, discussed. You've heard about digital tonight. You'll hear about a local development programme. You might hear references to the plan for North Lanarkshire. Um, you'll hear things talking about the community asset transfer, participatory budgeting. A number of things that you, you may have heard about, but you don't know a lot of detail about. And what we want people to do, people who are attending the board meetings, to have as much information and knowledge about the issues we're going to be discussing as possible. So we're going to be setting up a few board development sessions after this round of board. So in the next few weeks, we'll be, we'll be setting up a, opportunities for people to come along and hear about these specific issues in a bit more detail. So that when we are in the future, over the next months and years, talking about town centre investment, we're talking about the new town community hubs, we're talking about the town centre regeneration, community asset transfer, participatory budget, etc. They have a better idea of what that's about. So that, that's the plan in conjunction with our colleagues in Voluntary Action North Lanarkshire and other community planning partners will pull together um, an approach to having some community engagement in relation to development of the in relation to the specific subject matter. If there is anything that you as, as people who want to attend community boards would like to hear about in more detail, then please let us know about that and we'll make sure that we, we can pull together some further information in relation to that to, to try and build the, the knowledge base of everybody that's attending the board as much as we can. We know everybody's not going to become an expert in it. There's a wide range of subject matter, but it'd be good if people had a, had a, a better idea 
of the subjects that we're discussing here. You will get some information at presentations, etc., but just to have a, an ongoing um, learning opportunities um, going forward. So hopefully we can pick up on that, Chair. Thank you, Matt. Any questions from anyone? I've got a message on the chat bar. Um, I glossed. Was that Christina that put that in? No. No, there's a point at the bottom here. A glossary of terms is a great idea, as many partner nations use the same two, three, four letter acronyms, which have vastly different meanings. Um, I don't find anyone can explain that. Mark and, or Christine, can you explain that point if that's possible? Um, I, think, I think it wasn't from us. I think it was um, Andrew Wilson that it said that. He was just making a point, I think, about um, okay. the, the kind of acronym. So we've kind of explained that that's, that's what we'll do. We'll make sure that there's a glossary of terms and, and we'll get okay. that circulated to everyone. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Any other questions for Mark, anyone? I think that the sure. government is coming up. Sorry, Mr. Carry on, sorry. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, the, um, I, I, I understand that the government is has come up with this intensive consultancy program. I don't know, uh, actually, I was going to ask whether North Lanarkshire is uh, intend to do uh, such program. Uh, but I heard about now uh, that there will be some program for the board um, capacity building, which is excellent. But I was wondering about this program, whether it's going to be within our area as well or not. Thank you, Bishra. Anyone can answer that one? It's not something I'm aware of, Chair, but certainly we'll, we'll make some inquiries and we'll feed back to the board about any, any information we can get on that. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll hopefully we'll get something for you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Matt, have you covered the local development programme or? Yeah, I'll, I'll cover that just now, Chair, if that's okay. okay. Thank you, yeah. Um, this report would have been sent out to people who have joined the, the meeting earlier last week. Um, it's just to give an update on the, the, the local development program for the Airdrie area. Um, those who are not aware, the local development program is a is a number of projects that have been previously authorised by the community board or the locality partnerships in the past to have um, local projects carried out in the area. Just to give you an example of some of the projects in the area that's, that you may have seen, um, you might see the, the, the lights down in the Monklands Hospital, the kind of boulevard of lights. Um, they, those lights were funded through a local development programme in the town centre in Airdrie. You may have seen in the last year or so, 18 months, um, more um, benches in the town centre area, in the pedestrian area. Those are funded through a local development programme there and on South Bridge Street. The Welcome to Glen Mavis signs, the Welcome to Chapel Hall signs, for example, again funded through the, the local development programme. Just to give an idea of some of the projects that have that have been carried out um, in, in the area. Uh, there's only, currently there's only one project that has been, is still to be undertaken from last year or from this financial year's um, programme and that's in Calder Creek, sort of to uh, a play area um, where there's been upgraded and a toddler area within there has been upgraded and that's still to be completed. If you look at Appendix 2 of the report, for those that I've got a copy of the report there. I tried to share it there, but it wouldn't let me share this, unfortunately. But I can send this report out to anybody that's, that would like a copy of it. It's just to let you see in Appendix 2, there's a number of projects that have came forward from um, a variety of groups in the past. And the number of these have been already approved in principle at previous community board meetings and local locality partnership meetings. So we'll continue to see how we can go on with them if once we're aware what the budget is going to be for a local development program in the area. We'll, we'll hopefully have that confirmed in the next couple of weeks as to where we are going forward with that. There's a couple of other projects that we're looking to get approval for the board just to have in principle approval at this stage. Um, it's within the report. Is, one is uh, environmental improvements, heritage improvements in 
the Cairn Hill area for a number of projects. The second one is a wider ranging one for additional CCTV in the locality um, to give us some a budget, a, a budget within the locality to put in CCTV where it's required in conjunction with our partners in the police, fire and rescue, etc., where we identify hotspot areas that might require some investment. There's a couple of projects that aren't in the report, but have come into this since the report was published. Um, some road safety projects, parking projects, in one in Queen's Crescent, Chapel Hall, and one in Arndale and Plains. These are a couple of projects we'd also like to add to the list. But these are purely at this stage just for um, approval in principle, and we'll work up more detail in relation to these going forward once we're aware of what we have uh, in the budget. Uh, and we'll bring back further information to the board as we go forward to prioritise which projects we, we, we feel are merited in going forward, linking in a number of ways. But importantly, something you'll hear about later on um, is the local outcome improvement plan. And we want to identify what the priorities are for the area um, and, and take forward projects based on what local communities um, really want to see happening in their own areas. Uh, and that's what we'll, we'll, we'll base our investment on going forward, Chair. So it's just to see if the, the board is happy for us to include those projects in the report at, at this stage, and we'll feed back to you at a, a future date. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, any questions from anyone? And everyone happy with what's being proposed at the moment? Um, somebody want to comment, uh, Marion? Hi, Michael. Thanks. Hi. Um, Matt, I just, I'd like to ask a question about funding that we had in Calder Crooks for a heritage project. Um, the money, I think, was allocated out of the LDP programme 2019-20. And we worked with the um, council architect to design the, the space that we were going to use. We had costings, we had um, benches organised. And then the pandemic hit, and we weren't, we didn't have the opportunity to spend the money. Um, I see it's not part of that programme. Have we lost that allocation? Has that gone? Or is that something that we can now bring back to the community board? Thank you, Marion. Thanks, Marion. Uh, that project was lost to an extent when the funding couldn't proceed during the pandemic and the funding for that, we could only proceed with projects which had been identified as being essential spend or which we had contractually committed, which is why that project kind of fell off at that stage. We weren't aware of what further projects or what funding we had available, but you're, you're right, that one should actually still be on the list, Marion, and we'll make sure that that Calder Cooks one is put back on the list um, as, a, as a project for um, we're not saying we'll guarantee we'll go ahead with that, but it's, we'll certainly look at it again in terms of the approvals that's been given. That should have been included on that in that appendix um, so far as a project that was still there but hadn't been progressed at this stage. We'll make sure that gets put on. That's great, Matt. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, Mary. Yep, that's great, Michael. Thank you. Councillor Beveridge, you want to come in? Oh, less this councillor stuff, Michael, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. McBride. Before I say anything, I'd just like to, to compliment Irene. I see she's still in the Caribbean there. She was in the Caribbean last week in their working group, and I see she's still there by the judge in her background. <laughs> well done, Irene. Uh, no, it's just there's some great projects on here. Absolutely exciting times for us. I just hope we get we get we get the, the money, the, the funding through for them. Uh, it's just to reiterate, Matt, that one, that one and call the crooks will be put back on. Uh, the list, great for that. And also, seeing planes, uh, we spent a lot of money in previous lap for the welcome to plane sign. That's still that's still knocked down. Uh, is there any way in which you can uh, sort of part fund that with the council? I know I've spoke to you that in the past regarding this. Is there anything we can do with that? Because it's a main through fare, uh, and uh, it's 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 pretty poor. We can't allow the we can't allow uh, vandalism to to reign. Thanks. Thank you. Right. I'm happy to add that on as a potential project. I know that the council were looking to try and recoup funds through other means for that. As you know, there was a car drove into that, and I don't know, I can't remember if it was a stolen car, but there's some issue that it was a car drove into it and caused the damage there. So we're trying to recoup the cost to rebuild that. But I'll certainly we'll add that to the list as a, a proposal coming from the board tonight, and we'll we'll see what we can we can do in that going forward. Michael, can I come back in on that, please? 
Yeah, sure. I, Matt, see when these pro see, there's some fantastic projects here. We're doing great work. It's brilliant. However, Plains is a prime example. See once you spend the money in the pro in, in likes of the projects, are they not covered by the council and council indemnity insurance thereafter, or are they just put up with no insurance on them? Thanks. Right. I would need to check the insurance that you know, we, we have projects we put in place that are usually covered by maintenance agreements, etc. Councillor Beverley, in terms of insurance, I would need to get further confirmation for that. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone got any other questions just before I jump in as well, Mark? Anyone want to ask anything or put anything aside for that? Bishra? Uh, with regard to the projects, my question is, um, for minority ethnic people, there is no way that um, it's going to be considered their needs as a priority area. So I don't know uh, whether the council um, considers how they are going to have the inclusive, you know, policy and how that's going to be consulted as well as if people from minority ethnic background are going to be involved in that. Thank you, Bishra. Mark? I think in terms of the local development programme, we're more than happy to take applications from any aspect of the local community. Um, and if, and if there are any, is there any specific groups that, that Bush is talking about, we're more than happy to meet with the groups to give them further information in relation to the projects um, to try and get examples of projects they would like to see taken forward within the local community. More than, more than happy Definitely. to do that, Bushra. So you want me to contact you and... Yeah, contact again. contact me and we'll get something organised, yeah, absolutely. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, Bushra. Thanks. Thank yes. you. Anyone else just before I ask Mark a couple of questions? Matt, it was just um, a couple of things for me as well on the, the local building plan. Um, I think some to what Marion was mentioning um, at the very start, just before lockdown, um, we had a conversation with, a, I think it was yourself and a few other people about, and it might not be a priority just now, but interpretation panels around the Green Belt area that we wanted to uh, get set up. Um, so that was the first point. And the second point was, yeah, I know you did mention it, but I would just like to get some specifics on it about the Cairnhill heritage improvements. Um, if there's anywhere I can find out. And also, very lastly, and um, there's a few ideas that I, I want to put forward for around the Cairnhill area. Um, and I would, I guess, you suggest that I write to you directly regarding that. Thank you. Just a sure, sure. Just a first couple of points. That's that. Um project that's put into the into the list at the moment regarding the heritage is the one that covers the environmental and heritage projects that you're okay. referring to. So that okay. covers that just now. So that that's put in there as an indicative figure to to look at potential projects coming forward. So really if we have budget in place, what we'd really look for is the the, lo the local people in the Cairn Hill area who have got some ideas for that yeah. to, to to bring those forward. I know we did look at interpretation panels at the at the time, etc. for certain parts of the the, the the green belt area you spoke about, we weren't able to take that further any further forward, which is why we've continued to keep it in the budget at this stage. Okay, thank you. Anyone else before we move on? No. Okay, thank you, thank you for that, Matt. Um, next point is from um Anne Alexander, local outcome improvement plan. Anne. Hi there, thanks, Michael. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just going to give a brief update on the work of the local outcome improvement plan um, and some of the work that's been undertaken over the last few months and just where we are at this stage, OK? Um, I take it I'm uh, trying, attempting to share the presentation, is that correct? <laughs> um, I will give it a go and see how I get on, OK? So bear with me. I wasn't sure whether Matt was going to be the glamorous assistant there and share it for me, but... Um, Good luck, and you'll do well. <laughs> I've never used Cisco WebEx before, so um, so I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work. Um, so I'm only sharing a web browser by the looks of it. So no. Um, 
let me see. I do apologize because I thought that this would have been more straightforward. Let's see. Is it sharing? Is yeah. the local outcome improvement plan up there? Yeah, we've got it on the screen. Well, I can see it. Everyone else see it? Yeah. I think it should be okay, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Okay. Um, so it is a very um quick update on what has been going on within the the um the work um of us as part of the community planning partnership. And um I'm sorry, Anne, it's, it... sorry Anne, can I just stop you? It's been on to the... that's it now, it's been back on again. Brilliant. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. I do apologise because I seem to be do having a little bit of Wi-Fi issue. I think it's just telling me I need to get off it now. <laughs> um, but um, so um, as part of the local outcome improvement plans, this is an update, as we said, for the community boards. And um, a little bit of a recap on it is that there is the plan to co-produce nine local outcome and improvement plans uh, across all the community board areas. And these plans should reflect the local community need and it should focus on interventions. It really should maximise the use of shared resources so that we're not duplicating, but we're actually sharing all our assets that we have. And it does improve the outcomes of people experiencing the highest level of inequality. So it does have some key outcomes and key priorities to, to the local outcome improvement plan. And um, there has been a phased approach of this, which was approved by the North Lancashire Strategic uh, Leadership Group. And many of these, I'm sure, were involved in, so in this work um, late, maybe mm, October, November last year. Um, so the first phase was about mapping the work of key council services and partners. And um, this was initially to help with local priorities and link them to the strategic priorities. Then the phase two was stakeholder engagement. So many of you would have been involved in that as well, I'm sure, giving your views and feedback. And then on to phase three was when wider community engagement happened. So, um, and again, many of you may have been involved in that, in that the, those consultation processes that went through. There was various formats of survey monkeys, listening events, and um, and seldom heard voices meetings. So there was there was quite a um, a robust um, consultation process taking place. Okay, um, we're now on phase four. So in phase four, we're now um, uh, working towards the draft development of the local outcome improvement plan. And to do this, um, there's been a short life working group that has been set up and that has involved community board members who have been interested in joining the group to be part of um, trying to develop this local plan. And it also includes all the other community planning partnerships as well um, there from Voluntary Action North Lanarkshire to uh, community planning and to NHS in particular health improvement staff. Um, so they have met and um, they've met a few times and the purpose of meeting was to review all the available feedback data and intelligence that's been made available over all the other phase, uh, the phases. Um, discussing the emerging themes that's came out of that because there's been a lot of triangulation work went on to check that to send check that when one group has said something another group has said it as well and then another group has said it so it makes it it makes it um more prevalent as a priority because it's said across a wide range of forums and the the purpose of the short life, life working group is to identify these potential priorities and think about solutions and actions so that they can be brought back to the community board so this is just um, a blank template and that's really just an example of what will be used for each one of these key themes that's identified um, and that will be able to support the short life working group and the wider community members and community boards to be able to start to prioritise some of these these themes and also start to see what really is quite achievable short term kind of pieces of work and um, what's a little bit more medium and then what's a little bit uh, will take a little bit longer because there may need to be a bit more consultative work done around some of the some of the emerging themes so that's just an example of what will be used to try and create the final plan um the identified priorities that have came out from all the engagement um that's happened over all of these months is um they're not they're, they're not exclusive but um 
they're probably themes that many of you will be familiar with within uh, within your communities. And uh, some of the priorities have been the COVID re recovery response. So people wanting um, to highlight that as a priority right now. Um, mental health issues for young people and adults. Um, a more diverse and wider community involvement in community boards. More community involvement in planning and development of community hubs. Um, uh, digital participation. So a bit, um, a bit of the the presentation we heard about how do we how do we ensure that we address people who are excluded from the digital world and training needs around that as well. Um, access to local information and support, um, which needs to be a mix of online and face to face. Um, poverty is a huge issue, as we're well aware, and particularly uh, things that were emphasised around this was welfare rights support, budgeting, form filling. So these were these were issues, and these again, as I said, they're not in any particular order, but there is three that's came out probably as the top three after all of these. But at the moment, there's still really important ones here around employability, um, transport. Um, young people, um, and particularly in increased mental health issues, and looking for more rural activities as well, and volunteering opportunities, which I think is really positive if we can link more young people into volunteering roles. Um, older people, and there seems to be an increase, as we know, an increase in bogus callers right now, particularly with people being at home and shielding and vulnerable people maybe being on their own right now. Um, confidence to go back into the community and again, more activities in rural areas. Crime community safety was um, was uh, pertinent throughout it as well around antisocial behaviour. Some problem areas were identified in that information and litter and fly tipping. And within the BME communities, um, there was um, a focus on representation and voices heard on community boards and development of community hubs, um, more training and job opportunities. So these were the key themes that came out of the triangulation of all that information. And there was a lot of information to be triangulated and the Short Life Working Group has been doing that. So um, the three key ones really that came out in the talk were poverty, COVID-19 and mental health and wellbeing. So they were the three that came that came out at the very top. Um, so the next steps, the next steps are that the Short Life Working Group will continue to meet between March and June, work on the action plan, engage further with partners um, to agree a, a approach to developing actions under each priority and whatever those priorities are, are um, part of consultation with the community board and all its members. But the aim is to have a draft plan outlining the priorities and development for leads of each of these priorities by April 2021. Community board local outcome improvement plan sessions will also be arranged in April and May to present the draft plan for discussion and make it available for wider community comment. Um, with a view that the initial plan will be approved and published from June, July uh, 2021. And the priorities from the plans will be part of the community board agenda and subgroups. And there will be progress monitored and reported regularly on that, on outcomes and activities on those priorities. And finally, an annual report will be prepared and that will highlight the successes and the achievements and any proposed amendments and improvements that are needed as we go through this journey. OK, so it's a very whistle stop tour through a lot of work that's getting done in the background um, with many of our, our community board members and um, our partners. So. Um, that's me. Has anyone um, got any questions? Thank you, Anne, for that good update. And it's uh, okay. well to be doing that and seeing that. So thank you very much for that work. Um, as Anne said, is there any questions from anyone for Anne? I don't see many people so if Anne, if Anne can take the screen down, if you can do it. No, I know. <laughs> I'm, uh, aha, I see. I knew how to put it up now by <laughs> sheer accident. So now I'm trying to figure out how I take it back down. Um, has that removed it? Uh, no, I can see the agenda. <laughs> Is there not a wee unsh stop sharing button somewhere, in? Uh, I can see a wee share see. button at the very top right hand corner, Anne. I don't know if that's on your screen uh, or not. No, I think I, I think I accidentally, um, 
I do apologise. Um, I thought I might just have to leave and come back again. I think <laughs> we're all still we're all still there. Can I'm, you I'm, stop me sharing? No, no, I don't know if maybe it is the, the person that organised. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I do friend, apologise. Um, I think we've got a question for Anne. You can put it in the sidebar, yes. and then we can we can, and we can get. We can, we can, honestly, we will get to it. We will. Yeah. Um, I'm just. Uh, I seem to have lost the whole part of getting back into it again. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, okay, am I here? I can just see you now, Michael. I do apologise. I feel like I have to leave and come back in again and that will take it away, okay? So just continue. Thank okay. you, Michael, and I'll be okay. back. Thanks, Anne. Thank you. <laughs> just waiting for the screen to disappear. Now. That's not happening, isn't it? Not. Can't even leave now, that's awful. And there's a comment on the chat bar. It says go to the top of the screen and hit short, stop sharing. I know, but I've lost the screen, that? I'm afraid. So uh, I seem to have lost the screen entirely. So um, I do apologise. Um, just uh, I'm just going to completely. <laughs> OK, no off. problem. Thanks, <laughs> OK. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, I'm just seeing that. I think I'm just going to disappear like just over a few seconds. I only see five people at the top screen just now. <laughs> Is everyone still seeing a grey screen in the middle? Yeah. Brian saying control alt and delete, but I don't think that's from, from me or for anyone else. No, we'll just maybe need to carry on just now, just put them on the side there then. Um, okay. Um, so onto yourself, Kristen, for the board reference and subgroups. Thanks, Chair. Um, no, I just wanted to say, obviously following on for Fe Anne's presentation there, um, when she was talking about subgroups, and, and really the subgroups that we're looking for in terms of the board should really link to the local priorities and the, the local outcome improvement plan. And it was good to see that some of the things that are kind of coming through, like the, the kind of crime and community safety, and obviously that that's some of the things that have been put forward in terms of subgroups so far, some suggestions. So if the suggestions that we've had um, were so far have been community safety, youth issues. Um, there, there's al also been discussions around about LDP, maybe having potentially a subgroup for that. Um, there could potentially, we, we've heard earlier on about a subgroup for um, digital participation, you know, so in terms of uh -huh. delivering digital locally. And that's really interesting that that's come through as well, because that, that would really kind of fit into the, the, the kind of subgroup set side of things. What we don't want to do is we, we don't want to duplicate what's already there. So when we're talking about um, youth youth issues, there's also already a youth kind of provision within the area, like youth forums in the North Lancashire Youth Council. And we wouldn't want to kind of duplicate that. We would want to look at the the um, the existing structures and see how we could support them to, to look at some of the, the kind of issues that are identified through the board. Um, so Really, what we're looking for is for people that are maybe interested in being involved in some of these. I know Linda earlier mentioned about if people are interested in, in taking part in the, the Delivering Digital subgroup. But if the people have got ideas for potential sub subgroups based on the, the kind of um, issues that are coming through LOIP, the kind of whole poverty thing, and I know there's a kind of poverty action group already in Airdrie, which is great. Um, again, we wouldn't want to be duplicating that. We would be wanting to link in into that so that they would kind of provide a feedback to the board. Um, so if people are interested in being involved in any subgroups or potentially leading that, or if there's issue, if there's local structures already in existence that, that feel they could take some of these issues forward, then we'd be really keen to hear from you. Um, so happy for you to get in, in touch with us or let us know tonight uh, if you would be interested in, in getting involved or taking some of these things forward. Thanks very much, Chair. Okay, thank you, Christine. Just before I go into questions for Christine, 
Um, I think we've got all the screens back again, so that's good. <laughs> and um, as I say, before I take questions, I'm just, there's one question at the bar from David Smeal, um, and if anyone can answer it, I think it's more to do with what Anne's presentation. There's a more diverse and wider community involvement. What does that mean? Can anyone enlighten David? Leanne, do you want to come in on that? Um, yeah, no problem. Um, so, sorry, my name's Leanne Pollock. I'm a community partnership manager and I'm kind of overseeing the, the development of the, the LOIPs across North Lanarkshire. Um, in terms of, I don't know if David, David's able to, to clarify, um, in ter was that one of the priorities that was identified or are you talking about just in terms of the, the wider kind of approach that we're looking oh, at? It was on one, David, of, the, one of the priorities. It was one of Anne's slides there mentioned uh, more diverse yep. and wider community involved. Yeah. I was wondering. What they meant so, I think that was something that was highlighted through the engagement around the lights that people were come back saying um, they felt that, well, obviously the community boards are a really important um, vehicle for engaging with communities, that clearly we need to do some much more targeted work to make sure that the wider community is involved. So there are some people who might not come along to community board meetings. They might not come along um, if we say we're doing a consultation. Um, doesn't mean their views are not important. Um, but if we're engaging around something very specific, so a particular priority, if we do it in a much more targeted way, um, whether it's with the BME community or you know whether it's with disability forums or whether it's with a particular geographical area, maybe experiences kind of higher levels of poverty and inequality than others. So it's really just about making sure that the community community boards are kind of able to be held to account by the wider community. So if so, I think that's what that priority was, was about. It was about saying we need to make sure that the LOIPs have kind of plans that show how we're going to engage the wider community and the debate and discussion that takes place at the community boards, whether that's through social media, whether it's through it's holding specific sessions for specific uh, parts of the community. Um, just to make sure that, that when the, the community boards are maybe taking decisions or discussing things, they're doing it um, with a, a kind of broader knowledge of what the wider community or, or particular parts of the community that are most affected by that discussion um, have got to say, what their views, needs and opinions are. Okay, thank, thank you, you Len. Is that okay, David? Yeah. Um, sorry, I'll come back to Christine just two seconds. Just um, James has put a message on. James has just put a message on regarding um, the, what Anne was just discussing, and he's basically saying on the back of the meeting with the, the Local Outcome Improvement Plan, every youth forum, Ava and Abbey are planning to carry out a consultation on mental health and poverty. And if we could just jump across again to Christine, if there was any questions from Christine's point on the Board of Reference and subgroups. Just any questions for Christine? Sure. Yeah. Um, my question is about a um, COVID vaccine uh, for third sector staff and volunteers. The reason why I'm asking is that uh, is there any uh, actually opportunity to the this group come into also one of the priorities um because uh, um you know the volunteers they are going out helping people uh for instance uh, we've got someone who there are about two three uh, ladies who go and deliver um food you know to homeless and uh, and uh, I mean, they are sort of frontline workers. So I was just wondering if there is any possibility to uh, bring that issue up. Thank you, Bushra. Christine, is that something you can answer? Or? Um, thanks very much for that, Bushra. Um, in terms of subgroups, I don't think that would be a subgroup of the board, but that might be something that could be looked at in terms of, I think that would be NHS that would maybe be able to answer that question. Um, but we'll take, yeah. take a note of that um, and we'll see if we can get you some feedback on that, Bushra. No, because it's to do with the third sector and, you know, the third sector is doing so much work at the community level. So they could be, they should be recognised. 
documenting and then offered especially say for instance within our uh, organization i know that there are three people who are doing it and they are young because only young people can go out uh, you know rather than old ones so i don't know when their turn is going to come and there are young girls as well uh, we've got a young girls group and they are writing likes of cards and then taking some goodies to a old old uh, people's residence right so um the question was whether they don't know when they will get their vaccination so that's so it was raised within our our community or in our group but it applies to all third sector organization it's not just ours yeah, thank you, Biosha, for that. That's that's well pointed out. Thank you. Um, just moving on, can I just ask? I'm not sure if maybe everyone's come off on mute. If you're not on mute, if you could again, just the next speaker, if you don't mind, please. Thank you. Um, the next one was Matt uh, for the consultation plans around the town and community hubs. Thanks, Chair. It's just a update the board um, a number of people may already have had information sent out to them in relation to the, the meeting that's taking place um, regarding Airdrie on the 10th of March um, a week tonight um, we'll put some information in the chat bar that gives you a link to uh, the meeting that's taking place and if somebody's interested in joining that meeting then they can just go through the link and that will get them access to the meeting that's taking place online on the 10th of March regarding the, the Airdrie um, town hub so I just wanted to get to, to high, highlight that at the board tonight, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Mark. Any questions from anyone? Sorry, Michael, just trying off it. Just, just to confirm the first comments that um, the council staff have also made um, reserved requests for people who are frontline who, who are out and about during the evening and during the night to, to get vaccinated, but unfortunately, um, we have to go with the NHS guidelines on this at present until such things things change. So, um, just an update on that. That's okay. Okay, thank you, Brian. I know it's not quite a little point on the side, but yeah, thank you, <clears throat> Michael. Can I come in on that one? Yeah, uh huh. I see. I was thinking for Bush, what you were saying there. I know that they've got an arrangement just now with the police and the emergency services that the, at the end of the day, if there's if there's any, and then and there's generally always vaccines left over, that there's a phone call made to these services offering these vaccines. Is that something that possible we could go into, uh, Brian? We could get uh, join them up to that. Thanks. <laughs> It's certainly something that can get put forward because I think the same question has been asked, uh, Councillor Beveridge. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it to Andrew um, McPherson on the Silver Group to, to see if we get some response back on it. Can I maybe say just on that one, Brian, Thanks, as well? Bro. Raymond Taylor was on the call earlier. Raymond's the Health and Social Care Manager. Might be able to give us some input to that. So we can pass this on to Raymond and ask him for some input as well. Thank Agreed. you. I've just, I've just seen a point, uh, Alan, on the sidebar from Judith as well, Judith Remner. Um, there's been a discussion we vaccines from front for like frontline third six staff and voluntary staff. It was discussed at the meeting with Vanel today, and Judith's going to try and find out more and get back to Bushra. Thanks, Michael. Okay, thank you. Any other last questions on that point? Um, just Chair, the last can, point. Chair, can I just before you go into that one, just to pick up on just we spoke about the about the, the town hub consultation. Can I just mention that yeah. the, the town visions consultation is is live um, and, the, and the, online at the moment. And it's, if people wanted to access that, then they can um, they they can do that. And if people want to see the, the link to that, they can let us know. And we'll make sure people have access to to the the online um, consultation as well. Okay, thank you. Um, just on that, before we go into community matters, uh, petitions, is that some interesting you have? Or, yeah? uh, there's none for this meeting, Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, just moving on to the last main point um, of community matters, um, any input from local community groups, agenda items for community groups, anything specific? 
you know, they put a little note in the sidebar or the ones that I can see put your hands up. There's some people I can't actually see the face when it comes to them. Can I just add uh, one point to that from the community groups? I know it's um, been on the agenda. Obviously, we're just coming out of winter. That's okay, Matt. Um, is that um, I, I noticed the next meeting is round about is June uh, 2021. I know we're sort of a, just hitting summertime. Um, but is there a possibility for the June meeting um, that we can get someone um, from the uh, environmental and transportation to discuss about the proposal for this year's winter policy. Is that a possibility just to give us a, a little update on what their thoughts are? Yeah, we can make an easy for somebody to provide that. I don't know whether that, that information would be fully available at the kind of June meeting. I don't know whether you wanted to consider maybe leaving it to a wee bit later on to the early autumn. The meeting, the next meeting scheduled for like kind of late August, September time. Maybe better to have it at that time, Michael. Maybe, maybe near the time when the plans are maybe be more um, updated to to give an input for, for the area. Yeah, that'd be fine because I, I think I remember it went to the committee on August. So in just in case we missed anything, but if that's possible right. to do that, I, I, I think we we'll, we'll leave it to the kind of August September meeting. That's probably a more opportunity yep. then to give um, input at that point. Yeah, that's fine. Matt, Anything, Michael, there's, just to let you update you, there's usually a winter preparation meeting around about November time. Sorry, who's O'Brien? Oh, Brian, okay. sorry. There's yes, usually sir. a meeting of uh, council officers around about November time for winter preparation. Uh -huh. So I don't know if that'll fit in with the, 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 the sequence of the meeting. So I think August would be quite that. good just to get some uh, early update in case there was any early questions for us to sort of mm. prepare for it. But yeah, no, no that's fine. We can get both, I, I believe. Thank you, Brian. Um, next point is, can I bring Claire in, please, from the police? Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, just to cover some things that I had spoke about on the, the last meeting just before Christmas, um, bogus crime already been alluded to earlier on tonight by one of the, the board members. Um, again, we are still continuing to see bogus crime being committed. Um, not so much going door to door at present because it's obviously winter time, but more online. Um, we will continue to put messages out both via our social media, Twitter feeds and their Facebook pages in relation to that. But again, it's just it's something that we're seeing and it's, unfortunately we're seeing elder members of the community being targeted as well. It's not simply about younger members of the community buying things online, but um, bank accounts being um, targeted and things. And unfortunately, we have had a lot of elder members in the community targeted. So again, we will continue to, to monitor that and put things out on social media, but it is something that we're very alive to. Um, last meeting, I mentioned the issues in Hall Craig Street in terms of youth offending and antisocial behaviour. Again, we unfortunately have seen a rise in incidents around about Graham Street. Um, in recent times, we've had £6,000 worth of damage reported to a roof. Um, as a, a result of youth disorder. Um, we've had two incidents of culpable and reckless conduct where missiles have been thrown from the roof of the premises on West or sorry on Graham Street. Um, and we're working with the retailers at present to try and identify the, the youths responsible for this. We've been fortunate and Safar is one of my campus officers um, who works within the community prison team here at Energy. He's identified three of the youths. Uh, responsible, but we still have others to identify and we'll continue to work on that. We're also using the CCTV footage from North Lanarkshire Council to assist us, which has been a, a, a great bonus in that. But um, again, it's, it's something that is becoming very problematic. We are encountering a lot of incidents. Um, there's been a lot of money um, in terms of vandalism and obviously the, the culpable and reckless conduct where there's been missiles, missiles hurled towards members of the public. Um, so we, we are aware of that and we're working on it. The housebreakings that I mentioned at the previous meeting as well, um, which were largely across kind of Cairn Hill and Wynn Hall areas. Um, since that, I can tell you that there's been two males um, identified as being responsible for some of these housebreakings. And indeed, only last week, um, two of them were, were brought out from 
prison where they're uh, currently sentenced um, or seven custodial sentences and they were charged with a further four additional housebreakings from the area. What I would say is that um, the reason that came about was, was enabled um, in part by the residents coming forward with additional information that we didn't have at the time when these incidents were reported. So on the back of the, the residents coming forward and providing additional information to us, um, these two individuals have now been charged with four crimes. Um, in general terms, as an update for us, Petersburg, we've seen a, a, a rise in um, particularly antisocial behaviour at a, a specific block of flats. Um, we have in place for this week and the next two weeks a localised action plan target in that area um, because of the antisocial behaviour, noisy parties, youth disorder and vandalisms that are taking place. We have been working with the housing in relation to this um, and we will continue to do so. It's out for task the tasking process as well for the response officers who are aware of the issues that we're experiencing up there and they will continue to target that where operational demand allows them to. Karen Hill, if I could just pick up, Matt, on something that you mentioned earlier as well about the environmental work that you're doing in Karen Hill. If there's anything that we can assist with in that regard, um, in terms of information or incidents, etc., that we're having to attend, I'd be more than happy to share that with you. There have been, again, youth incidents recently in Cairn Hill starting to come to the fore, again, surrounding the theft of wheelie bins, fires, etc. So if there's anything that we can do in terms of information provision for you for that, I'd be more than happy for us to help. Um, and lastly, Councillor Beveridge, I know it's certainly on your agenda, the quad bikes um, issue that's prevailing across Airdrie and um, the villages. We do have access to officers who are trained in the use of off-road bikes, um, of which there are four trained to cover North Lanarkshire Council area. Unfortunately, at the moment, I only have one that I'm able to deploy, and because they deploy in twos, then we've been unable to deploy him over the last period of time. Um, he actually works with the CP team here, so it's, it's really helpful to have him. Um, the other officers that have seen a change of role in recent times and moved to different departments from their previous jobs within the community policing teams and the North Lancashire side of the, the division. Um, however, we will endeavour to have them released from the roles that they're doing on occasion to assist with these additional patrols. Again, that will that will depend very much on the um the demand that's been placed on them in their day to day roles. Um, we have a meeting arranged for the sixteenth of March that Councillor Beveridge has been very active in in organising for us, um, in order that we again get together and look at targeting these issues, which unfortunately do blight the community. Um, and we are seeing an again an an increased demand and in calls for the the quad and dirt bike activity. Um, if I can just take you back to June of last year, um, we had an excess of 50 complaints, 50 incidents recorded across the Airdrie area for uh, the dirt bike calls. Um, that kind of lowered down to just under 20 in September, but even in December, we've seen a rise and the numbers, unfortunately, are increasing. Um, again, though, I would ask that people do continue to report it because if they don't, then we don't know that it's happening um, and we will endeavour to, to place that as best we possibly can with the, the finite resources we have. And that's an update from me. Thank you, Claire. Um, any questions from anyone for Claire? Just to be aware, I can't see about 12 people on the screen. Um, so if the people that I can't see, if you can put your message in at the sidebar if you need to. Um, and the ones that I can see, if you can put your hand up. Um. Can I say something? I'm on the chat. Sandy, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Sandy, go Sandy on. Watson here. It, it was just clear when she was talking about this continued fraud against particularly the elderly population, um, which is disgraceful, really. Um, and I'm wondering if there's anything else we can do. I mean, this has been going on for years. And you would think that, you know, with all the publicity there's been about phone calls, about 
bank accounts and everything that people would be more knowledgeable now and would, would resist this. But it's obviously still going on. You look at the weekend press and you can see it. Um, and I'm just wondering, are there any ways we can we can maybe through the post office or, or publicize it to so that particularly older people can realize that you know phone calls, you know, can be dangerous, very dangerous at times. Um, I just wonder if you've any thoughts on that, Claire. Thanks. Thanks, Sandra. Certainly one of the, the things that we've used in the past um to target specifically hard to reach groups would have been doctors and GP surgeries, but with things being what they are at the moment, then to get messages up in these, there's not a lot of people going to doctors and GP surgeries. Um, one of the things that we used before Christmas to get a message out was by putting leaflets into people's medication. So when the medication is getting delivered to them, then they're getting information about bogus callers. That's perhaps something that we could revisit if the group would think that uh, that would be of, you know, of advantage to us. Thank Anything you, certainly is better than nothing, to be honest. If we can publicise the danger, um, even like so, some of these phones, you get these wee things to beside the phone that tells you who's phoning you. If we could get more houses to have them, these wee bits that tell you that incoming numbers, we might find that you know older folk wouldn't answer the phone when they see it's international or, or a strange number, you know? I think, unfortunately, what happens with these calls, sir, is that um, they come from private numbers and quite often people will answer them because they don't know who they're from. Unfortunately, we had somebody targeted um, towards the end of last week who was told that they were speaking to a police officer and believed that to be the case and unfortunately passed um, their own personal particulars out. So it, it is something that we are continuing to try and get the message out there. Um, and hoping that people will not give out personal information. Um, but you will be aware, have, you see it in the media frequently, this, the various different scams that these individuals are using to target people are becoming more and more difficult to, to spot from at the outset. And people are quite quickly reined in, they give out that information and before they realise it, an app's been cloned or put onto their phone or put onto their computer or their bank account's been compromised. You know, so it is something and it's perhaps something as well for the short life working groups to maybe look at, um, you know, in terms of the health and the community and, you know, a rising elderly population. Is there a better way for us to get that message out? Okay, thank you, Claire. Thank you, Sandy. I've got two people who want to come in. Uh, Alan Bevge and Busha. Busha, first, do you want to come in? I'll bring Alan after Busha. Busha. Yeah, Claire, that was very good, you know, the information that you've given. Um, from my own personal experience, if I tell you, I don't know how many email I receive, say, for instance, because I'm doing online banking. So if I've paid already my TV license and then the email will be that, you know, your um, a, a, your transaction didn't go through. And then uh, obviously at, at that time, sometimes you don't know uh, what to do. Uh, however, I realized that uh, it, uh, the money has been taken from my account anyway, so I didn't answer. But that's not just one. I feel with every transaction that uh, I'm doing, I keep coming back to me. And then after some time, you know, I, I might get two, three uh, emails and then it stops. Yes. Thank you, so I don't know. I don't know whether that's something you know. Um, that's another way when people paying bill and they are asked to pay again. So, um, in fact, they, they, yeah, my question is: Should that be uh, reported? Because then, at least, obviously, you would know. Um, the police will know what's going on with regard to online banking. Or the bill being paid. Clear. Some of them 
um, they come through. I know I certainly have had emails through from the tax office and the uh, DEL yes. and places like that who I just wouldn't be expecting anything to come through from them. And naturally, it would be my reaction to delete them. Um, however, other people might go into these emails and then once you're in the email, that's unfortunately when people do get scammed. Um, there are other instances where um, people will receive emails that have got a very, very similar email address to HMRC or another company like that, and they think that that is genuinely who they're dealing with. I mean, certainly for information purposes, if you've not given any word, if you've not lost any money and there's been no money has changed hands, then there hasn't been a crime committed. However, if there is information which can be given to the police, which may help us prevent frauds taking place in the future, for example, email addresses that have been sent to you and things like that, then yes, that would be helpful to make us aware. You know, well, my, you when that. my husband passed away, my brother who was in Pakistan, so he received the message that, you know, I was in a trouble. And he went and he paid. And we only realized afterward, basically, uh, he never knew. He just did it because he got very upset about it. Yeah. And uh, he just paid. It's not, I mean, the way it goes, he lives in Pakistan and I was here. So if someone I picked up from my emails, all the information that people were sending me and um, he, he just used all of that from me. Thank you, Busha, that's been noted. Thank you. Busha, just on that, my advice to you would be, only open an email if you know it's from a trusted source. Yeah, now he knows actually. It's just <laughs> that he's done that. Thank you, Claire Busha. Um, Alan, question for us, Claire? Uh, thanks, thanks, Michael. Uh, firstly, I'd like to put Sandy's point. See, pre-pandemic days, uh, the, the the police, the particular community officers were awfully, awfully good at going, speaking to groups, speaking to community centre groups, speaking to elderly groups, carpet bowling groups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they were absolutely fantastic at doing that. Uh, in my area, was up at Cl Cl Springfield Community Centre. Uh, Calder Crooks and uh, Glen Mavis, they were great at getting in and speaking to groups like that. Hopefully, days will come back soon. But, uh, Claire, my question is see, I'm not going to touch on the cause or anything like that because that will be covered elsewhere. See, the one, see reporting the stuff to 101 now. I realise this is the, your, your, your <clears throat> uh, field just now. Uh, I've had lots and lots of people complaining about contacting the police, non emergency, given at the 101 number, right? So I raised that the other day there another meeting and i was somewhat uh, surprised when a counsellor from motherwell said that they they never had that problem that they, they never had the, the issue phone in 101 whatsoever uh, but and it was sort of uh, it was it was making me think see if you see me dial 101 in airdrie or 101 in motherwell do you get to the same control room or is it a different control room thanks there are two control rooms um and service centers as well so because of the demographics for Lanarkshire. Sometimes your call actually goes through to Bilson Glen to the control room through there, or what? What is the service centre? So you have your first point of contact where the call taker will re will take your call if they can give you advice over the phone in relation to what that call is. For example, I'm being flooded from above. Well, it's not really a police matter. You maybe want to phone the council. Here's the contact number for them. So you'd be given that at the first port of call. However, if it's a policing issue, your call would then be transferred across to the area control room, who will then you'll then speak to either a member of police staff or a police officer who sits in the area control room and is responsible for putting your incident onto the system and then allocating resources to that incident. When they do that, they will grade them accordingly. So if it's a, an emergency incident, if it's a triple nine call, then obviously it will have an immediate response. Um, but if it's a lower level call or perhaps a diary call, for example, where you don't need the police immediately, but you need the police to come to you for you to report a specific crime or event because you're unable to attend the police office, then we can make that happen at a time when best suits you and we'll arrange that over the phone. So it just depends, as I said, because of where Lanarkshire is and because of where the two control rooms are, um, essentially Motherwell or Bilston Glen your call would go to them first of all. 
Right, thanks. Thanks, Michael. Chair, you're on mute. Sorry, I was on mute there, sorry. <laughs> um, just before I come on to Claire, uh, thanks, Alan. Um, just there's a, a point on the sidebar that we were discussing, Claire, about someone saying it's a good idea for the pharmacist um, to add the information with prescription. So if that's a possibility, um, that would be quite useful, actually. Um, sorry, if there, has anybody any questions before I come on to Claire? Could I just make a comment there, Michael? Sorry, who is it? Sorry. Marion. Mar oh, Marion, yeah. Okay, Marion, yeah. Um, Claire, just thanks. Thanks for that update. And just to reiterate what Alan was saying there, I mean, the, the problem with the quad bikes and the duck bikes in the outlying villages is, um, is in, it's just awful. But as Alan said, that's for another meeting, you know. But I do feel that it is, it's important that it's part of this agenda because it does adversely affect us as um, residents of Calder, Crooks and Plains. And, you know, you were giving us an update there on the, the antisocial behaviour and the, the vandalism that's going on in um, Hall Craig Street or Graham Street. These kids are up here in droves some days in quad bikes and, and, and uh, dirt bikes. And it's environmental damage. They're totally destroying the the area around the lock up here. So it's environmental vandalism, and also it's you know as residents, it's just awful having to put up with it. So just I feel I know that Alan's saying, and we have got that meeting organised that we'll be at. But I think for this board, it is something you know that we need to keep at the forefront as well. So just just a comment around that. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Claire, do you want to come in on that quickly? Yeah, if I could just thank Mary for her comment there. I couldn't agree more with you. Um, you'll be aware that there there was a, a quad bike meeting that was held by one of the officers from my community policing team. But again, unfortunately, because of the situation we currently find ourselves in, it has kind of fallen by the wayside. Um that said the actual use of quad bikes and off-road bikes has continued um, and they have targeted when they've been able to, they have targeted the, the area up there. Um, they've also provided information packs to people who have been involved in the off-road and the quad biking in terms of what their own responsibilities are in relation to antisocial behaviour and also to um, offences which may come under the, the realms of the Road Traffic Act. So there's very much the, the two parts of it. Um, so anybody that they're identifying as potentially being involved in this antisocial behaviour, damage, vandalism, um, you know, road traffic offences, they are being provided that information. Very much for us in the initial stages of it, it's about educating people and then taking the action against them because there are people up there who simply buy their children off-road bikes or quad bikes and they're unaware that they may be involved in road traffic offences because they think that you know everything is okay with the use of these bikes but um, very much for us it's about educating people in the first instance um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to discuss this a lot further at the meeting that we have uh, in the next two weeks. Can I just, just a oh. last comment quick I just say that I know Alan was saying that it does take, because we all do um, report these incidents. And there are times recently, it has been taking a long, long time to get through. But can I just say that once you do get through, your officers have been really sympathetic and helpful, you know, when you're recording the incidents. So just, um, just to say thanks for that. One of the things that we have encouraged the control room staff to do is we are speaking with them, as we're asking them to link in with the public space CCTV operators so that they can take the cameras to the areas that are affected. If we don't get up there at the time, then we have the footage captured and we're able to use that to then try and identify the people responsible. Great, great. Thanks, Marion. Thanks, Claire. Claire, can I just come in quickly to a few 
couple of local things on the Cairn Hill area. Um, I've spoken to a few couple of residents um, who have expressed some concerns. As you know, some people's sleeping patterns have all changed during COVID-19. Um, and there's been a couple of occasions where they've maybe been looking out the bedroom window at one, two o'clock in the morning and noticing, um, I know it's not illegal, but noticed a few youths hanging about with um, hoodies on. Chair, I'm sorry, I'm really struggling to hear you. Can you hear me okay? Quite quietly. Okay. Can you hear me now? That's better. Okay. Um, just a, a few people who I've spoke to around the Cairn Hill area, um, who, as we know, lots of people have got a difference in sleeping patterns just now due to COVID-19. Um, and I've maybe noticed some youths, and I know it's not illegal, but some younger folk round about with, walking about with hoodies up at two o'clock in the morning, or on bicycles with no lights on. Um, so there is a wee bit of concern. I do believe some of them have reported it on 101. Um, on another issue, I know it has been reported as well that some houses around Cairn Hill area, around Tesco's Cairn Hill Road, have been hit by eggs. Um, on their windows and some graffiti late at night as well. Um, so it was just to highlight that. Um, and on our current community Facebook page, Cairn Hill, we've got over a thousand people on it. And there was on an occasion about maybe six weeks ago, quite a lot of people commenting about the activity of scam phone calls, which we were mentioning. Um, and I know some of them have made that aware to 101 also. But on a personal level, just something out of interest that uh, people might want to be aware of. Um, I had a couple of scam phone calls, but one of the ones that, not, not concerned me, but I was a bit sort of a shocked that the phone call that actually called me um, was only three digits different from my own personal mobile number. So the last three digits were different to what my personal mobile was. So it was a bit like, oh, that's a bit strange. So it's just to make people aware that whether it's just a one-off, but whether that's a type of scam, I don't know. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Just on that, we don't go in and monitor Facebook pages or anything. A lot of these um, Facebook pages, as you'll be aware, are closed because they're community Facebook pages, yeah. they're not open to members of the public. But in any case, for us to go in, this may sound a bit strange, but for us to go in and look at Facebook pages of individuals, um, we would actually need to get special um, permission to go in and do that as well. Um, so if there is information that is out there within the community that's been published on Facebook, I would ask you to feed it into us, um, whether that's by email or through the councillors, whatever, you know, the easiest way for you to give us that information please do it. Um, if, I know that people are reluctant to phone 101. Um, again, if we don't know these things are happening, we can't react to them. But if you have an instance like that where you're getting repeated comments or numerous comments made about action that's going on in the community in terms of antisocial behaviour, please report it in to us. Yeah, that's fine, Claire, because I'm, I still keep in contact with Caroline. I know we don't meet up just now because of COVID. But um, I keep contact, hopefully monthly, um, with Caroline, we get some feedback. So, and we also give us some feedback when we pay as well, so which is quite useful. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Anyone else before we move on to, is Fire and Rescue here, did you say, uh, Christine? Somebody from Fire and Rescue? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm here covering for Brian Kane tonight. Andy Wilson. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Hi, cheers. When you go. Um, it's just um, just really a quick update. Um, we've been, in terms of our community safety work recently, we have been really quiet in, in, in comparison to how we've been in the past. Um, for obvious reasons, really, I, I covered this at the last meeting, I was that as well, but it's really our crews have been put into bubbles and it's really to try and keep them in their bubble so that they can maintain an operational cover um, should they need a rise um, and socially distancing as well and, and the stations in between like turnover of shifts and things like that. But obviously we're hoping with the, the way the vaccines that are going that things will get back to a, a, a kind of more manageable state in the in the near future. Uh, we can get back to doing more of our home fire safety visits and um, 
especially as, at the minute we're only covering our, our very high and high risk premises. Um, community safety team, they've still been doing a power work and they're working well with our partners um, covering all as, the, as, as many of the uh, the, the local initiatives and that that, that that we can do, obviously subject to, to COVID. Uh, I think we were working with our police colleagues uh, in Airdrie just recently. I think there'd been a lot of diesel theft from a, an area, so we've been working with them to try and uh, make the area more secure. And obviously the operational crews are well aware of that and the, and the dangers that that brings. Um, I think the, the local senior officer as well, he's at a point now, I think he's ready to issue the local fire plan as well. So that's that's going to help with a lot of reduction strategies and non-domestic fires, uh, accidental dwelling fires and casualties, fire casualties, non-fire casualties, stuff like that. Um, and obviously the, the, the measures that we've had to put in place due to COVID as well to try and ensure these, these plans work. Um, I'd just like to cover as well, I got a question at the, the last meeting in relation to um, smoke detection and heat detection in domestic properties. Um, obviously, the legislation is coming in to say that that needs to be done. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if everyone in the public is aware that's been put back till February next year. Um, and it's just something worth worth covering. Uh, what I would also like to uh, to state as well, I wouldn't necessarily leave it until February next year for, for people to try and get that done. If you can, if you're in a position now to get that done, fantastic. We can't legislate domestic fire safety. It's not in the fire Scotland. We can't do that. I think the way it will be enforced will come down in future to uh, like house insurance, home reports, that kind of thing. Um, but I would I would still urge uh, as many people if they if, if they haven't already got it. To, to get it in and one of the other things um, I had to kind of I, I don't know if I mentioned it strongly enough but the detection a lot of people think it needs to be fitted by an electrician needs to be hardwired into your mains electrics that's not necessarily um, the case the detection needs to be linked that's the main thing if one detector goes off they all need to go off but they can you can get wireless systems now the wireless systems will come in a, a little bit more expensive than the the, the hardwired ones, but it's a workable system and it can be installed by the homeowner uh, with a little bit of uh, a little bit of care to make sure if all the detectors, the heat and the the smoke are, are basically talking to each other. Um, but that, that's a, a kind of whistle stop tour for me. Um, I'd like to take any questions on that if anybody's got anything. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I've got Brian Lafferty wants to ask questions. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just to back up what, what Andrew's saying, um, is the um, person responsible for all the, 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 the council housing for the tenants in the local um, area and throughout North Lanarkshire, we are actually in the middle of a programme of upgrading all the fire um, detection equipment um, and um, hopefully we'll have it all completed for 36,000 houses by the deadline. We were on track to make good progress until the pandemic had, but we've got that up and running again. As soon as we get all clearance from the Scottish government on the level, so just to make everybody aware that if you haven't, if you do, if you do are a council resident, um, you will get that in due course if you haven't had it already. Thank you, Brian, for that. Um, Alan Beveridge. Hey, thanks, Michael. Hey, Brian, I've had a, a couple of complaints in my area regarding the uh, theft of wheelie bins and bins get wheelie bins getting set in fire. Do we still? I don't know if it's for, for yourself or, or Matt. Do we still um, make the chains available uh, to lock the, the bins up? Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks, Kaiser Bez. Um, I'd need to check with Andrew on that one. I'll be Andrew's remat. I don't know, Matt, is there anything in the past that you're aware of? Or do we just, I'll just drop Andrew an email and ask you the questions being asked. It's certainly something that um, we have helped fund in the past. We've fund, we, we, we purchased quite a lot of chains and padlocks that the Fire and Rescue kindly prepared um, for use by local residents, and they put it into kind of carrier bags and made it available for 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 collection. And by that, again, going back to the local, it was funded through a local development program. That initiative and it's certainly something that we uh, we could look at again in the future if that's something that the the board would want us to to consider. Thanks, Michael. Can I come back in? I think that would be yeah. quite a good exercise for the board to be seen to be do, uh, Matt, in a, in a relatively uh, and it would be put some positive action where where 
but, but which which the board would be seen to be get involved in with our partner agencies. I th that may be worth if, worth uh, pursuing if the board is so minded. Thanks. Mark, you want to back in or you yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy to add that to list and take that forward if that's something the board's happy with. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Any other questions for Andrew? Can I just make a couple of points as well? Is it, it's regarding the chains. I know we had an issue in Cairn Hill a couple of years ago, and it was useful because some of our local residents do the police visit the community council and obviously with the fire service there as well, um, who distributed chains to some of our local residents that were getting bins um, stolen. So that did work very well, and the residents are still using them um, just to keep the bins safe. So that, that has worked pretty well. Um, Brian, could I just come in very quickly on the uh, NLC housing plan for the fire protectors that Andrew was mentioning? Um, I'm not sure if maybe I've missed it or other people missed it, but it might be worthwhile just putting out like, a little social media note about the update on how it's going with um, the North Lancashire Council plan for getting these fire safeties in place. Is that possible? That's possible, Michael. I'll, I'll chat with the team tomorrow and um, maybe get some comments about it through the, the media team. Yep, that'd be good. That there's work well, that. Been, we'll try to do it. Yep, that's good. Thank you. Anyone else for Andrew for Fire Rescue Service? I don't see anything in the chat bar or in the way of the hand. Should you have your hand there? No. no. Um, okay. Thank you, Andrew, for that update. Um, any other? Michael, Michael, could I come back in just just on that question earlier on? You asked yep. about um, the um, third sector. That Bush asked about third sector getting vaccinated earlier. Uh -huh. I actually emailed Andrew during the course of the meeting. Andrew just come back to me and said it will depend on what the third sector volunteers are doing. And some local authorities are helping at vaccination centres so they will have received the vaccine. However, in, however, in general terms, what, what I said is actually true. It's the health board that, that decide who gets what and when. So after after volunteering on the in the vaccination centres, they will get access to being vaccinated earlier. Okay, so thank you. the health board that decide what to do. Thanks, Brian. Did you get that, Bisha? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. That's okay. great. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Um, any last points um just before we come to the, the final of finalizing the meeting any other competent business from anyone um claire's just put a point in that she would agree with the point councillor brevage has made about the chains and padlocks being made available to prevent the theft and subsequent fires of wheel events yep that's it. Thank you. no other competent business from anyone there okay and just finally, before we finish up, um, the date and time of the next meeting I've got here is Tuesday, the 8th of June, um, 6.30 to 8 p.m. again. So everyone's welcome to join in. And again, anyone from the public who want to join in uh, on the live stream as we have been tonight. Anything from the host before we finish up? Well, that's everything. Chair, thanks very much. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Keep safe, and we'll see you in June, hopefully. When thanks, before. thanks, Michael. Thanks, okay. Chair. Thank nice you. Thanks, you. everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.